Local contributor Tammy Bruce. She's also independent women's voice of President Capri Cafaro, former Democratic Ohio State Senate Minority Leader, Beverly Hallberg, District Media Group President. Ladies, uh, <clears throat> big ma major news. Uh, Tammy, not necessarily a surprise per se. The timing, however, considering that Gary Cohen had arranged a meeting for Thursday with companies, CEOs of companies that you still to sort of try to persuade President Trump away from this idea of a tariff, particularly on our key trading partners like Canada. So it's happening right now. What does it mean? Well, I think that, look, those meetings could be said just in general to, as things are moving along in the White House. Uh, the fact is, is that clearly it seems he'd made up his mind a little while ago. There was a story of when he'd made his announcement that uh, Mr. Cohn was sitting in the Oval Office in a chair sort of being ignored. And, and so I think this, it, to some degree, was inevitable. Look, Mr. Cohn's a Democrat, uh, a former president of Goldman Sachs for a lot of the uh, conser more conservative Trump supporters. He was a sign of the globalist dynamic of the swamp, if you will, in a lot of ways. And certainly a lot of people who are complaining about Mr. Trump's economic agenda have overseen for the last 15 to 20 years the economic destruction of this country, including a massive recession, starting with George W. Bush. So I think it's beneficial that the president has a mentality where he's willing to let people go, where change is acceptable, to get to exactly where we want to get. And I think this also tells you that the president is not going to bend to someone else when he knows who brought him to this stance and, what, and to right. make sure his economic agenda is moved forward. Capri, we saw a tweet uh, alluding to something like this happening very soon. We also saw the press conference uh, that uh, President Trump shared with the uh, president from Sweden. Sweden. So, uh, again, not necessarily a surprise that this was going to happen. It's right. been rumored for a long time, although the news that it happened right now is somewhat uh, surprising. It, I, I definitely echo that sentiment. I mean, I think that this was no surprise. This is something that has been building up. What actually surprises me, and no one has talked about this, Gary Cohen is a native of Cleveland, Ohio, and he started his career at U.S. Steel. So here he is reportedly leaving the White House, uh, someone that, you know, obviously came from a community that has been built on, uh, you know, this kind of industrial backbone, started his career there, went to the New York Mercantile Exchange, uh, you know, and and is reportedly leaving because he is not supportive of the tariff move. So I find that really interesting. He is a Democrat, and I think there's a lot of people also scratching their heads saying, well, you know, this more protectionist agenda is more of a Democratic, uh, you know, policy right. agenda. I, I see both sides of this issue because I am from northeastern Ohio. We have been built on steel, but we also build cars. So, you know, there is some push and pull here when it comes to those issues, and Gary Cohen is probably seeing that. Too. You know, the pendulum swinging back and forth, Beverly, I, I think, you know, one thing that comes to mind is that when Steve Bannon left the White House, uh, the, the notion that economic nationalism uh, was going to be abandoned, all of a sudden, that's back to the forefront. Uh, it's out with the establishment. It's in with Peter Navarro, uh, Wilbur Ross, protectionism, tariffs, America first, economic nationalism. To me, that's the story right now. This, there's really a battle between traditional conservatives, not which Mr. Cohn is, but he is in line with, I think, conservatives. But he is an establishment these. person. He is an establishment person, but I would say when you even see the establishment Republicans, you had the Speaker of the House come out today, Paul Ryan, going against the president on these tariffs. So I think there is a battle between the Republicans right now. You have even the Freedom Caucus siding with establishment Republicans taking on the president for his position on tariffs. There's not much legislatively they can do. But I do think we're going to see a showdown, um, which really pits Trump and anyone from a nationalistic perspective against both conservatives, traditional conservatives, and even the establishment. So we're going to have to see what happens. Well, I don't, Tammy, I, I, we have to see what happens. I thought we saw what happened in November of 2016. Uh, you know, it's, it's President Trump's party. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly the Republican voters are behind him. Uh, maybe Paul Ryan could survive, uh, but even he doesn't want to go to a full blown out battle. Mm -hmm. He'll voice his opinion from time to time. But President Trump really going back to what got him elected. Mm -hmm. I know we're all surprised when someone actually does that, when they make a promise on a campaign trail and they actually li live up to it, no matter how controversial. Well, and let's remember, too, Trump isn't new to this. Uh, with his business experience and his history, he, for uh, at least a couple of decades, has been talking about the importance of tariffs and how we're getting uh, harmed by the imbalance of what happens when it comes to trade. 
right. So uh, this has been an issue for Mr. Trump for quite some time. At the same time, you're looking at for, for the nation as a whole, some of this is inside baseball. Right. It's Absolutely. about some of the, the, the politics and who's for it and who isn't. What the American people see is his policies to this point really improving their lives, really making a difference. And they're trusting him to really know what needs to happen here. And the judgment will come based on the impact of this. And I would say don't rush out and say that this is going to be a horrible experience for the American people. President Trump well, knows the, the ins and outs and the pros and the cons, and he thinks it's going mm -hmm. to be good. Now, we should point out that the Dow right now markets off 300 points mm -hmm. in after hours trading. Uh, you know, what I also found interesting, though, is President Trump was reiterating the fact that he was going to go through with tariffs and also pointing out that even our friends, our allies have taken advantage of us. Mm -hmm. The market rallied into the close. It didn't collapse. It that. rallied into the close. I find that pretty interesting. One other thing, uh, uh, another breaking news item somewhat overshadowed here. Mexico just announced their exports mm -hmm. into America for cars in the first two months, up almost 10 percent, and they will produce 4 million cars for the first time ever. A few years ago, they weren't even producing 2 million cars. Americans hear that and they wonder, right. what, something isn't right here. Well, and, and this is exactly what I think this entire conversation about tariffs is actually geared towards. And basically, Steve Mnuchin, I believe it was, said that earlier today, that this is about um, a negotiating tip on NAFTA. Um, yes, I, you know, the White House is saying right now that we're going to apply uh, these tariffs across the board, 25 percent for steel, 10 percent right. for aluminum, regardless of, of the country of origin. But it's also being said that, look, you can get you can get your exemption right. if you play ball with NAFTA. And that's right. what but this let is me, about. Let me just right. add, the president actually said that, in fact, this would not apply to Mexico and Canada if NAFTA went well. So sure. this exactly. has been for negotiations from the beginning. Sure. Real, Beverly, uh, real quick on the messaging side of this tomorrow, what do you expect the White House will say? I think the White House is going to stay strong on this, unfortunately. I think he's using all of this as a bargaining chip for NAFTA. He also wants to put these tariffs forward. It is a campaign promise of his, but I think it's extremely concerning that we're doing this towards some of our biggest allies and friends. And it is going to be very negative to American workers who even are in the steel consuming industry. And also, you can expect rising costs as things continue. It's a great messaging point to talk about America first, but this does not put America first. Although a lot of people wonder why our friends charge us 10 percent to bring cars to their country when we only charge them 10 and a half percent. We some, can look at trade deals. We can look at trade deals. Some people wonder how That's friendly why we our go friends have been. Bilateral and not multilateral. All right, ladies. And give the president more credit, please. Thank you He'll all win. very, very much. We'll be right back.